Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Our first talk will be by Scott Reed on deep visual analogy making. This is joint work with Yi Zhang, Yu Ting Zhang, and Hong Lek Li at U of M. Michigan. Okay, so uh, we're familiar with the word analogies like the following. King is to queen as man is to woman. Paris is to France as Beijing is to China. Bill is to Hillary as Barack is to Michelle. We know that neural word embeddings have been found to exhibit regularities allowing analogical reasoning by vector addition. So you can do things like king minus queen plus woman equals man approximately. We can also make up visual analogies in the same style. So you have some example transformation pair where you change something like the color and then you want to apply this to a query. We can change the color, shape, size of, of these shapes and we can make up a prediction problem where the task is to fill in the pixels of the output that make the analogy true. This, requi this requires two things to solve this problem. You have to understand the visual relationship of the first pair of images and then correctly apply this transformation to a query image. There's been a lot of related work on modeling relationships between images. So there was a paper on separating style and content with bilinear models and uh, where there is a factorized representation into style and content units that can be separately uh, adjusted. Um, there was work on image analogies a long time ago where you could take basically local style and texture from an example images, image and apply it to a new image. Um, there was work on learning to traverse image manifolds with locally smooth manifold learning. There's been a line of work on using um, higher order Bolson machine models, um, training on pairs of images and learning to represent the transformation. And having learned this, you could apply this inferred transformation to query images. And so they um, learned to do rotations and translations, and then later work they did more general transformations like facial expression changes. There has also been work on learning representations with analogy making, but as a regularizer to improve object categorization performance. Uh, very recently, there was the multi-view perceptron, which is a deep network for disentangling face identity and viewpoint. Um, there was an extension of these higher order uh, relational learning models to time series. Um, th there's been evidence that uh, multi in, in multimodal embedding space, you can do vector addition and subtraction to do analogy making and actually retrieve images that complete the analogy. There's been evidence that convolutional networks can generate high quality images like chair renderings. Um, there's been a convolutional, deep convolutional variational autoencoder that learns uh, disentangled representations, disentangled feature representations, and this can be used to solve certain analogy problems. Um, there's also been work on developing models with tractable probabilistic inference over compact commutative Lie groups, which includes rotations and cyclic translations, and later this was um, extended to 3D rotation. Uh, so what we do differently here is that we have a very simple convolutional encoder-decoder architecture where the training objective is end-to-end -end, uh, prediction of the pixels to complete the analogy. And we can also learn disentangled features um, as a special case of our model and also combine analogical analogy training and disentangling. So now I'll walk through a cartoon example of our approach. So you have some example transformation from A to B, this little video game character drawing a bow, and you want to apply the same transformation to a query image, actually from a different camera angle. First thing we do is infer the relationship of the first pair. So we encode the two images um, using some encoder F, and we represent the transformation as a difference of embeddings, f of b minus f of a. Then we embed the query, and we need to transform the query somehow based on the transformation. The simplest thing we can do is just addition of this difference of embeddings of the transformation. And then we decode using a decoder g back into the image space. The objective is just to make this decoded um, image match the ground truth uh, completion of the analogy. So the questions we study are, one, what form should the encoder F and decoder G take? And two, what form should the transformation increment T take? So notice that uh, addition is, is one way to do this transformation, but it's not the only way. In particular, 
you could take this f of b minus f of a, um, and you could also make the increment to c dependent on c itself. So this increment function t could be some higher order uh, interaction like a tensor product or, or other things. And we studied three alternatives. Oh, sorry. For the encoders, we use convolutional encoder decoders. For the transformation, we study three uh, alternatives. The simplest is additive, where we take f of b minus f of a and just add it to the query embedding. Um, okay. The second one is multiplicative, where we take the um, transformation f of b minus f of a and um, learn uh, a tensor of parameters w to do a tensor product with the query embedding f of c. And the third one we tried is actually just concatenating the difference of embeddings with the query embedding and learning an NLP that gives us the transformation increment. And this is trained jointly with the entire network end to end. So here's a, a schematic showing um, these three options uh, in a simple problem of rotating a shape. So from A to B, we take this oval, it's rotated, and we have a query square, and we want to apply the same transformation. Um, and so there's three choices um, that affect the computation of this increment T. So as a cartoon, you can see what's happening for the additive, multiplicative, and deep versions of the model. Uh, we also have a regularizer um, on the embedding space. So the idea here is that we want to force the transformation increment to match the actual step that we take on the manifold from C to D. Note that there's no decoder here. So it's nice in the sense that we get a stronger local gradient signal for training the encoder. And in practice, we found that this allows us to help traverse image manifolds because we can apply analogies repeatedly. And so for training, we use a weighted combination of these two objectives. So here's the algorithm for manifold traversal once you have a trained model. Um, the first thing you do is you embed your query um, using the encoder, and then for some number of steps, one to n, we want to um, add increments to z on the manifold using the transformation function t. So given some example transformation b, uh, a, a to b, we just keep on applying this transformation increment, um, also taking into account the current position of the query on the manifold, and we decode at each step to get the generated images. So in this example, we have a rotation from A to B of this triangle, and we can repeatedly apply it to the query to do uh, repeated rotations. Uh, we can use a similar idea for disentangling, similar encoder-decoder architecture. So we can partition the feature space into some units for identity, pitch, elevation, and given two uh, images, say, of these cars, we can take the pitch and elevation from one and the identity from the other, concatenate these, and then decode. Um, we can form training tuples like this um, and learn a disentangled representation in this way. We can combine disentangling and analogy training. So we could do analogies, let's say, on the pose units um, and disentangle from these pose units the identity units. We could also incorporate an attribute classifier. So maybe for some problems, like um, generating these 2D video game sprites, there's lots of different character attributes, like what color is their hair, their skin, what kind of armor they have, what kind of weapon they have. And so you can actually disentangle an attribute vector from uh, a pose embedding. Um, and again, combining classification and analogy training. So in experiments, the first thing we tried uh, was uh, this shapes benchmark, uh, where we have shapes of different colors, sizes, uh, rotation angles, and we want to do analogy making in this setting. Um, so in this slide, I show the predictions using the additive model, where the transformation function is just vector addition. And the first two columns show the example transformation, the third column shows the query image, and then we show repeated analogy making. We find that the additive model does a good job for scaling and shifting, but it really fails for rotation. Um, the multiplicative model is a little bit sharper for scaling and shifting, but also doesn't do a good job in rotation. But the deep uh, model, where the transformation function is an MLP, actually succeeds uh, pretty easily for multi-step rotations. And quantitatively, you can see that as you increase the number of steps, the um, prediction error of the deep model stays pretty low, while both the other models increase uh, a lot. Um, quantitatively, for other um, analogies like scaling and translation, we see that the deep model does much better. Multiplicative is somewhat better, uh, but not a lot better than additive. Here are some videos. So we can, I'll show some rotation here. So we can actually apply the analogy in the forward and the reverse direction just by changing the sign of the transformation vector. 
Uh, here's scaling, translation. We can also interleave different um, analogies. So you could do scaling and then translation, or rotation and then translation, and just interleave the application of these repeated analogies. And also note that um, this was done all using a, a single model. So we don't have like one model for each type of transformation. It's, it's, one, it's one network that does all this stuff. Okay, that's for shapes. Here are some for video game characters. So here, the task is take the reference animation of this character, let's say walking, and then apply that same trajectory to a query character. And notably, the query character can be viewed from a different um, camera angle, actually, but we should still be able to um, generate the trajectory by analogy. So this is walking, thrusting a spear, um, casting some kind of spell. So you can see it's a little bit, I don't know, there's some pixelation, but it gets the idea. Um, so the way we do the uh, trajectory transfer is every pair of frames in the reference, we can get a transformation vector um, and we can just apply this at each time step uh, to the query, starting from the ground truth uh, query frame. We can just carry this forward and walk along the manifold in this way. Okay. Quantitatively, um, we compared just the additive model with disentangling models and disentangling with also an attribute classifier for doing animation transfer across these different animations. And we find that having an attribute classifier that's disentangled from your pose units uh, gets you a, a big win quantitatively. Um, we can also do extrapolation of animations by analogy. So what if you formed training uh, tuples of analogies where the transformation is moving forward or backwards in time? Um, so you could just um, uh, mine uh, training samples that way. Um, and then we, can fi we find that um, if we give an example pair of images where the transformation is just stepping one time step forward, we can take that transformation vector and apply it repeatedly to query images to actually advance um, the query animation, even though the query image is from an unseen character. So we can extrapolate along the animation manifold. Um, we also apply this to uh, cars. We find that um, we can disentangle car pose and appearance. Um, and we can get uh, both good discriminative performance uh, and we can generate cars by taking pose from uh, one car and identity from another, combining them, and then re-rendering. So in this figure, we can take the pose from this column, the identity from this column, and then combine these and uh, generate the predicted car image. We can also do repeated um, uh, out-of-plane rotation analogy. So in this example, we have a reference car that rotates in some direction to produce the output car image. We can take that transformation vector and apply it to this query um, repeatedly in the forward or reverse directions, and it can successfully, to some degree, um, hallucinate what the car would look like um, after applying this out-of-plane rotation. Um, so, in conclusion, uh, we, propo we proposed um, a novel deep architecture that can perform visual analogy making by just doing simple operations in an embedding space. Um, so this convolutional encoder-decoder network, it can effectively generate the transformed images um, rather than just retrieving images to complete analogies. Um, and we found that, interestingly, vector addition is, is enough um, to model transformations for some simple problems, like uh, scaling and shifting shapes. Um, but for other problems, like multi-step rotations, um, you really need multi-layer networks to parameterize your transformation increment, uh, in particular when the increment depends not only on the example transformation, but also on the current position of your query on the manifold, and rotation is an obvious example of that. And finally, we found that uh, we can combine this analogy objective um, with disentangling, um, and this can overcome certain limitations of disentangling alone by learning the structure of this transformation manifold. Thank you. We have plenty of time for question. I want to go to uh, any of the microphones. 
Yes, right there, on the right. This is very interesting. Uh, thank you for describing it so well. I'm yeah. curious, when you generalize to, uh, when you generalize one movement to a new character, does that also work when the uh, neural network has never seen that character doing anything at all? Uh, or does it require that that character has been seen in at least one form or another in the training set? Uh, we have um, disjoint characters for, for training and testing. Although there is um, lots of regularity in, in, in the characters. So, for example, um, the characters, they may have a, like a, a different um, hair color or um, different um, style of, uh, basically a different combination of attributes than any that you saw uh, during training. But each individual attribute, like there was probably, there, there was a guy with yellow hair like that in the training set, but not combined with all the other stuff. Ah, so uh, how many different characters would you say are in the training set? We generated uh, 672, so we had um, seven different attributes, um, and, oops. Yeah, we had se seven different, different attributes, and so the, the attribute vector um, was uh, 22 dimensions in total when you count all the choices. I have a slide somewhere listing this. Um, but yeah, in total we had 672, and we took, I think, like 500 for training and the rest for testing. We used, um, for the data set, we used this, uh, thing called Liberated Pixel Cup. It's all these like video game sprite assets, uh, and we just generated the, the uh, many, many characters, but obviously we could do way, way more than, than we did. Um, yeah. Very nice. So the, uh, you basically generated a big Cartesian product of characters right. and took a random selection as testing data. Right. Very mm -hmm. nice. Thank you. Thanks. Another question, Marco Aurelio. Yes. Uh, it's very nice work and very nice talk. Thank you. And my question is, if you think that this will generalize to natural videos as well, and what it would take to, to do so. Thank you. Oh, for natural videos. Um, potentially, yeah. Um, it's definitely a much harder problem compared to synthetic data. But um, there is a lot of um, training data for, for, for videos. And you could probably generate um, a lot of training data like mining um, analogy tuples in an automated way. So yeah, I, ha I haven't worked on that, but um, it sounds interesting. Thank you. All right, if there are no other questions, let's thank our speaker. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.